Hi, welcome to Grid Down Preparedness. My name's Wade. We've been off grid now for 18 days, uh, partially due to the government shutdown, partially due to me wanting to do some testing and save about two to three dollars a day on electricity. So what we have here is we have our 240 voltage hub beeping because it is mad at me because this is unplugged from this power station. It's only plugged into this power station and the data cable, that, the data cable is disconnected. It's early, it's Sunday. Anyway, so what we're doing is, I have a little portable generator. We're gonna take a look at it here in a second. We're not using the 240 volt generator today. I've got most of the fuel ran out of it. I'm gonna run some more fuel out of it later on its own and get that set up again for next hurricane season. Anyway, we are currently charging AC only into this. We don't have enough sun yet to kick in for the solar. Solar's still hooked up, sun gets high enough, it's gonna start putting in solar. And as the solar comes in, as you can see, no solar. It knows there's sun, but not, not enough to trigger charging. Um, we're drawing about 3,117 watts right now from a little portable generator outside. You can probably barely hear it in the background. So what's going on is we started out, this one was a 28% state of charge. It's now up to 30 and we have 53 volts on the whole pack. Coming over here, we're at 52.7 and 30%, this one started out around 29. So we're actively drawing power from this, which is why the battery pack voltage is slightly lower, which means the DC bonding cable going between batteries one and one of the two power stations, slightly different setup than last time where it went between the host, is successfully charging this battery pack. So AC power is going in here, getting converted to DC, and then going straight to this pack. So uh, this charging system with AC is effectively trying to charge 18 kilowatt hours of battery storage, which it worked on solar. And this was a test to see if I could do it purely on AC with a smaller, more fuel efficient inverter style generator. And we seem to be successful. Now I could do the same thing where I could plug it in here and have it back feed to that power station uh, but this would also be in UPS mode, so it would handle the loads in the house. And I decided I didn't want to do it that way. I just wanted to go ahead, uh, put it into this power station. It's not putting any output and let it just charge over to the second power station. So let's go take a look at our generator setup. So this is not nearly as loud as the other generator was. We've got about an hour and 16 minutes of runtime left on this. This has got old stale gas in it from probably a year ago at this point it seems. Well, maybe not that old, maybe eight months. And then we don't have this light. It's really, really dim because we're only putting 120 into this system. So it doesn't give me the full bright green light. We're still on this breaker here. Grid power's off. As you can see, it's still the same as it was 18 days ago. We haven't used any grid power. You know, move away from our noise maker back inside here. So one of the crazy ideas I had, and yes, here at Grid Down Pre Preparedness, we do have some crazy ideas. So over on the power station, for instance, in this case, my refrigerator, is not on the same circuit as we're running right now. So if we were to call this line one, that would be line two, line one, line two, line one, line two, line one, and, and, and so forth. Now, in an emergency, what I would do personally, this is not a recommendation of what you should do ever, always consult a professional electrician but I do dabble as an amateur. What I would do 
if I needed to supply all of my 120 volt loads, uh, the first thing I would do is I would go into here and I would pull that surge protector out and then I would disconnect or open all of these breakers. I would then go inside and bond the two bus bars, line one and line two together with heavy gauge suitable for at least 50 amps. The, this power station only puts out 30, but at least 50 amps. And that can be achieved with some six gauge like this. So basically uh, jumper cables, heavy duty jumper cables in theory could work to take one jumper cable, let's say the through black jumper cable and jump from one bus bar to the other bus bar. And in theory, I would have all of my 110 volt loads available to the power station. Um, that would be only, I would only do that if the grid was actually down and I had to do this. But uh, my fridge is only gonna be off for a couple of hours. It's cool, there's not a lot of food in the fridge itself and the freezer is slap full. So no worries about any food issues there. But we're gonna keep charging. Just in the duration of this video, you can see this is the charging port coming in right here. We're at 52 or 53.2 and 31%. And in this power station, we're at 52.9, so a lower voltage, but 32% uh, indication. I don't really buy the percentage indications on here all that much. Uh, they've been pretty much within a percent of each other through the majority of my testing. Uh, since I've added the bonding cable, that is. Before that, they had no idea what state of charge the other pack was. But that bonding cable, go check the channel. I've got videos about that bonding cable, which is really important if you want to do something like this. Or you have limited solar, and you want to input solar only to one unit. So solar into one unit will charge the other unit. Just like we're seeing now, AC input into one unit will charge the other unit. So anyway, if you like this content, please subscribe for more, help me grow the channel, and allow me to have some extra money, especially at this time of government shutdown, and I'll be able to buy some bigger, more uh, grid down preparedness equipment, like larger power stations, generators and more solar. Thanks for watching.